Hello, Lindsay here over at the North American Guitar coming at you today to tell you why you need a parlor or single O size guitar. Now, as the guitars get smaller, frankly, I do have a harder time making an aggressive argument that you quote unquote need one. Really though, I'm just here to try to justify why you might want one, which I'm more than happy to do. While the OM has versatility that makes it excellent on stage and in the studio, and the Dreadnought has acoustic power that makes it indispensable in jams and ensembles, a great small bodied parlor or single O is just a delight to own and play. They have unique voices that make them a great second or third instrument, and of course, their small size makes them inviting guitars to leave out for picking up when the mood strikes or for when you're crouched over a desk writing a song. So let's take a second and dig into the world of small body guitars. Like a lot of things with guitars, pinning down an exact definition of a parlor can get a little tricky, as one luthier's parlor may look more like another luthier's single O, which looks and sounds a bit different from their own parlor design. For the purposes of this video, I'm lumping together everything that we might call a parlor guitar by modern standards, from the narrow-bodied, traditional-inspired models that Santa Cruz and Collings have so beautifully revived, to anything smaller than a double O body that combines a short scale length and a 12 fret neck join. As we'll hear though, there's a lot of variation in tone between these slightly differing small body sizes. The original parlor guitars of the 1800s were a sort of bridge between Spanish classical guitars and the larger bodied steel string guitars that would come about in the early 20th century. As you might guess from the name, they were primarily used to entertain guests in one's own home, and they were made small both to be comfortable for women to play, but also because at the time, sheer volume just wasn't a priority given their use. The more traditional parlor look is a long, narrow body with a lower bout that measures between 12 and 13 inches across and a depth around 4 inches. Those early guitars were typically lightly built and often strung with gut strings, but as time went on, they were braced and built to handle steel strings. standardized their system, what we today might think of as a traditional parlor guitar became the size one, though they had a whole line of even smaller guitars. They also of course began building bigger guitars going from the size one to the single O, then to the double O, and onwards. Though those early parlor designs fell by the wayside during the craze for louder OMs and dreadnoughts in the 1920s and 30s, these small bodied parlors have really made a resurgence since the 80s once we didn't really need to have large bodies and we had some amplification to bring out the sound a little bit more. Santa Cruz even describes them as the optimal size for tonal perfection. And they've gone on to not only create their style one inspired by the original Martin size one, but their PJ parlor as well.
Now, just because something is small doesn't necessarily mean that it's quiet, especially with all the developments of modern Luthery. The narrow, more diminutive parlors like this Collings 2H, with its 12 and a quarter inch wide lower bout, are known for having a focused, punchy voice with a strong mid-range, while the wider-bodied 13 and a half inch single O's or parlors like the Martin Brie Love or Froggy that we have, have a more balanced voice with a relatively strong bass. Dreadnoughts are known for rewarding players who have a strong, heavy right-hand attack. Small-body 12-fretters like these favor folks who have a lighter, more delicate approach. Being one of those people, I've personally found that I am often actually louder on a guitar like this than on a large-body guitar. And that might be the same for you, too, if your playing style is better suited to a short-scale length. So with that, we'll circle back to the why you need a part of this video. Parlors and single O's are inviting, they're easy playing, and they're perfect guitars to leave out at a party, to bring along on a trip, or to compose with. And despite their diminutive size, they still have plenty of presence, a complex voice, and can suit a wide array of playing styles. Thanks for diving into the world of parlor guitars with me today. You can find all of these individual guitars over on our website now at thenorthamericanguitar.com, as well as any new parlors and single O's that have come in more recently. Last but not least, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss any of the guitars that come through our Nashville showroom. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.